Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about azoospermia. Now what is azoospermia? There is no sperm in semen. But the semen is present. That means that the patients give you a semen sample but there is no sperm in that. That means azoospermia. Now what is aspermia? <clears throat> aspermia means there is absence of semen okay so remember this difference between two this uh, these two uh, terminologies now let's discuss azoospermia now uh, if you can see here you are seeing a, a diagram of uh, this thing this testis this is the testis here i should make a, okay this is the testis here and this uh, is epididymis epididymis starts from the lower lower pole from of the testis so remember this thing epididymis starts from the lower pole of testis so this is testis this is epididymis this is vas deferens which carries the sperms this vas deferens goes inside the abdomen testis are outside the abdomen in scrotum but this vas deferens goes inside the abdomen through inguinal canal okay in the abdomen it it is joined by a seminal vesicle ducts from the seminal vesicle and becomes ejaculatory duct and this ejaculatory duct opens into urethra and from the urethra the semen comes out uh, from the penis so this is the normal pathway of semen now both ejaculatory duct open in the urethra now uh, let's discuss this diagram also <clears throat> this is a uh, pituitary axis for example uh, here in the brain there is a pituitary gland the pituitary gland will secrete FSH and LH both both of these hormones will stimulate spermatogenesis as well as other hormone secretion or other hormone uh, uh, synthesis in testis and what is the hormone of testis testosterone okay so fsh will uh, uh, fsh will do uh, or encourage the testis to make testosterone this testosterone in turn give the negative feedback to the fsh okay so uh, the fsh is checked by this testosterone this uh, negative feedback of testosterone Sometimes you can also call it that this testosterone is converted into the estrogen that is uh, by converting enzyme aromatase. This estrogen also inhibits the FSH. So whatever the, uh, the products of testis, remember testis also secretes testosterone as well as estrogen. It doesn't mean that testis will secrete only testosterone estrogen is always present in male also okay so this will this both hormones will again do a negative feedback of pituitary uh, to check the fsh okay so this is the pathway of uh, how testosterone is generated now when a patient comes to you or uh, if you see a case of azoospermia then you need to do some basic tests of that patient. Blood test. It will see the blood levels of FSH, testosterone and estrogen. Okay. Azoospermia that means the patient have no sperms in the semen. And what we are testing? FSH, testosterone and estrogen. So three different, uh, three different scenarios are there. For example, in one scenario, the FSH is normal. So the testosterone. FSH and testosterone both are normal. So <clears throat> what that means? What that means? The FSH is generated and the testis will in turn make testosterone. So the thing is testis is working. You can assume that yes, testis is working because FSH is also normal, testosterone is also normal. Okay, now so when we you know that the testis is somewhat working normally, so we assume that the spermatogenesis can also be going on. 
remember you cannot you cannot just <coughs> uh, know or diagnose absent spermatogenesis or decreased spermatogenesis only by the test the definitive test to to see that whether the sperms are uh, are generated or the spermatogenesis is going on in the testosterone only by testicular biopsy so remember one thing you cannot just see that yes the testosterone sorry the sperms are generated in testis or not to see that you have to go for testicular biopsy but testicular biopsy is not a very advisable investigation because testicular biopsy is in turn a very uh, 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 in turn a very painful procedure and uh, we are exposing the sperms to the blood uh, to the uh, to the blood of the body so there is a chance of generation of anti sperm antibody too so testicular biopsy is the last investigation you need to do otherwise you don't do testicular biopsy so what we are left with we are left with whether we can assume that that yes uh, spermatogenesis is going or or not we are not sure okay so what we do we just do some blood test that is fsh and testosterone and estrogen if fsh is normal then you can say that yes pituitary is working if testosterone is also normal then you can assume that that yes testes are working and when you do a physical examination of the scrotum if you find that the testis size is normal then you can show, uh, somehow you can assume that yes the testis is working and spermatogenesis is going on but if the spermatogenesis is going on still we don't find any sperm in the semen that means that the duct which carries the sperms may have obstruction there are chances of obstruction so it is called obstructive azoospermia when you got obstructive azoospermia the sperms are generated in the testis spermatogenesis is going on into the testis the sperms are present into the uh, testis and epididymis but they are not coming through the semen so there is some obstruction so this kind of azoospermia is called obstructive azoospermia okay now let's see the two another scenarios the very common scenario in case of azoospermia is fsh is increased and the testosterone is decreased what that means the fsh is working the pituitary is giving lot of fsh but it is a problem in testis where it cannot generate testosterone enough testosterone so there is no better negative feedback to the fsh here so that's why fsh is increased okay fsh is there testis cannot generate enough testosterone that's why there is there is lack of negative feedback that's why the fsh is high and testosterone is low in this scenario you can say that you can assume that there is a testicular failure so the reason of azoospermia may be testicular failure in general okay if you do a physical examination of that testis if you find that testis size is very small and uh, uh, sometimes you cannot find testis even so you can say that yes there is testicular failure and that is non obstructive azoospermia okay the third scenario is fsh also decreased testosterone is also decreased here the problem lies in the pituitary the pituitary is not generating enough amount of fsh that's why it cannot encourage the testes to make the testosterone so there is a pituitary failure this is this is also cause of non obstructive azoospermia here the situation is called hypogonadal hypo pituitarism okay now what can be what can be the treatment if you see here in the first scenario where the fsh is normal testosterone is normal you can say that yes there is sperms are generated but maybe the reason that the sperms are there in the testis so what you can have an option you have to go for ivf if the if the person 
wants to become a father then you can get uh, sperms from the testis directly with the help of tisa that what is tisa testicular extraction of sperm okay so directly you get sperms from the from the testis via uh, via surgical procedures so when you can do a tisa or when you can get uh, when the person can become father only when there is uh, you can find sperms in the testis sometimes some urological procedures are also there whether they will check whether there is any obstruction in the pathway and uh, if if they find a obstruction they can just uh, reanastomosis that thing so again there are chances of success but when this thing is there testicular failure is that that means that there are no test there are no sperms found in that thing okay there is very less likely that we can find sperms when we do a testicular biopsy or we do a tisa so that's why in this case we don't do a tisa okay when there is a hypopituitarism then we need to give fsh and lh uh, uh, from outside so that you can assume that yes again the testis will start generating sperms as well as well as testosterone so these are the basic thing about azospermia if you know this thing then it's enough for a med a mbbs person to know this kind of uh, picture whether you find a patient of azospermia thank you friends